If you are looking to get involved in Cleveland real estate, there is no other source like this one right here, folks, Holden Wise TV. I have a client from California who picked out this duplex, and before she spends her hard-earned money, she wants my take because guess what? I happen to have sold $200 million worth of duplexes just like that, and I happen to be one of the biggest landlords in the city. So let's jump into all the details on this property and investing in Cleveland right after this. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise. You are watching Holton Wise TV, specifically the MLS Search and Analysis Show. We have several shows on Holton Wise TV, right? We got the Investment Properties for Sale Show, where I give you video tours on all the properties we are selling. So if you're out of state, makes bidding on them pretty easy, right? But this show, this is a one-on-one -on -one show, right? You send an email to my team, give us your number, we call you, we talk about working together one-on-one. -on -one. That's what my client WD did, right? She is from Glendale, California. And WD, you sent me this duplex. You want my take on it. You're thinking about buying it, but you want to know... Uh, if, if it's a good deal, if it makes sense, right? Specifically, you asked me, what is the rental demand in this area? Is it growing? Is it stable? You want to know if the current rents are reasonable. What would I do differently if I was buying the investment or if I was managing it, right? We're going to get into all of that, right? First thing is first, the address, 6826 Clement, Cleveland 44105. Just hit the market eight days ago. $69,000, okay, $69,000, right? This, uh, this is what the listing agent had to say. This tenant-occupied multifamily home is a great way to build up your rental portfolio. Fully occupied, the property has two units, a large covered front porch, detached two-car garage, and full basement. The up unit, $525 a month with the lease through 831 2022 The down unit pays $550 a month with the lease expiring December twenty third, uh, December thirty first, twenty twenty one. Uh, that tenant has been in the unit since twenty eighteen. Located in Cleveland Slavic Village, this home offers a central location near park, school, shopping, and more. There is easy highway and public transit access, and it's just minutes from downtown and other popular Cleveland neighborhoods. Don't let the solid opportunity pass you by. Add this to your investment portfolio today. Now, there's some takeaways there. Right. First of all, that's written by the listing agent. Their job is to sell the property. All right. My job is to give you the the friggin the breakdown, the honest breakdown, cut through the BS. Right. I'm not going to put no fluff on it. Look, first of all, it's Cleveland. Every there ain't there ain't no fucking house in Cleveland. that's not close to transportation or close to downtown. Number one, uh, it says it's close to popular neighborhoods I, I guess that's true it's close to popular neighborhoods it's not a popular neighborhood right and that's my biggest thing with this this investment right it's it's the neighborhood okay now if you look at the ultimate guide to grading cleveland neighborhoods uh, i've linked to it in the show notes below it's also on the tools and resources tab of holtonwise.com i've graded this particular neighborhood as an f grade neighborhood now that is just this zip code it's not like broken down street by street, right? So here's my thoughts. I have mixed thoughts. There's some neighborhoods in Cleveland uh, in this particular zip code that I'm like, dude, if you're an out-of-state investor, you're going to get creamed. Don't ever do that deal. Also, how are you going to hire property management? Because companies like mine, they wouldn't manage it. These are just terrible neighborhoods. There's a lot of neighborhoods like that in Cleveland. And, you know, I'm sure if you watch enough of this show, you've seen me talk about those. This one is not exactly there, okay? It's not that bad. It's not that doom and gloom. But I don't really like this neighborhood, to be honest with you. I think it is very risky, right? Like, would my company manage a property like this? Yeah, we would. But I would say this is, this is teetering towards, like, the edge of, like, where our line of, like, nah, man, fuck that, right? Like, it's right at the edge, right? Because when, when there's a really tough, rough neighborhood, as a property manager, uh, oftentimes we'll just be like, no, we don't want the business, right? Because it's tough. It's tough to manage properties like that. So what that leads to is dissatisfied customers, right? Because 
everybody in the world, no matter no matter what. It must be the property manager's fault. Like, they could buy a goddamn house in fucking Baghdad, and if they can't get a tenant in there or there's damage from a motherfucking missile fucking drone strike, it must be the goddamn property manager's fault, right? That's, that's how you get stuff out there. When you read these internet forums, you get some fucking jerk off who doesn't know anything about real estate. They buy the cheapest, shittiest house in an entire metro area, and then they put in a the property manager puts in a tenant. Tenant doesn't work out because it's the fucking middle of the ghetto. Who the fuck do you think lives in the middle of the ghetto, folks? People that can't live anywhere else, right? And then it's, oh, this property manager's horrible. It has to be a bad property manager. Fire the property manager, right? So astute property managers, you don't take, we don't take on business that's just going to lead to negative reviews and just be a problem. That's one issue. The other issue is when you send people that work for you in the neighborhoods like that to cut the grass, to show the units, to fix the units, right? They don't like being in those neighborhoods, right? Their cars get broken to this or that. It's dangerous. It's rough. And, you know, that leads to higher employee turnover. And I don't know if anybody's watched, like, the news over the last year or so uh, in uh, Biden's America, but there's a little something called the labor shortage, right? So I would never want to, to make an industry, which is already difficult to staff, even more difficult, right? So I'm not saying this house is there, but it's getting close, right? It's getting close to there, right? So I am not in love with the neighborhood, but I'm not saying it's a deal killer for you because with everything, there's there's pros and there's cons. In this situation, you're getting a pretty deep discount on pricing. 69000 is what they're asking. Uh, if you're in like a D or a C grade neighborhood in Cleveland, right? You're going to be paying about 100k for duplexes, right? About 100k. And they're going to look just like this on the inside, right? Like nothing is special here. It's a low income ghetto duplex. Like that's what it is, okay? Like it's super dated. It's not like amazing, but like this is like par for the course for like low income investing in Cleveland. Like there's nothing like inherently bad or good about the interior of this duplex, right? Like it looks average, right? You're getting average uh rents and it's like an average looking building. So there's really no major takeaways with that, okay? As far as the rent, right? They're getting five and a quarter, 550. So 1075 comes in, 12,900 for the year. If you go section eight down the road, sure. Uh, you could probably get that up a little bit, right? I don't know if you can get it as high as 750 because like it's not the most desirable street to live on. Um, so we'll just run the numbers based on the current numbers, right? And the price I think you should pay. Because here's the thing. To take on the additional risk of this neighborhood, again, it's not 100% doom and gloom, but, like, I don't love the neighborhood. Uh, I don't even think I would want to see you pay 69 I, I think you got to get it for 50 I think you got to get it for half of what the duplexes are going for in the nicer neighborhoods. And as far as what the numbers may look like, uh, you know, using normal operating uh, projections – that I would normally use uh, w would result in an NOI of 3,947 after your fixed and variable expense estimates are accounted for. And if you bought it at 50, uh, that would project out a 16.4% cash on cash return because you only need to put down 12 and a half, bank would kick in 37 and a half. But here's the thing, when the neighborhoods get riskier, it gets harder and harder to predict how the investment's gonna do, right? So those numbers I gave you, you know, it's very possible that could happen, but it's also very possible that couldn't happen, and you run into some string of bad luck, right? That's why I like to put Section 8 tenants in these properties as much as humanly possible because that helps you project out how the investment's going to go because it eliminates some of the major issues you face, which is non-payment of rent. Now, uh, when you have non-payment of rent, of course, you're losing that money. Then, of course, you have to do another turn, right? I showed you those units, dude. Like, there's tenants in those units today, <laughs> But if they go vacant, if you think you could just re-rent it again with, like, that 1980s wood paneling and get decent rent or a decent human being to live there, you're sadly mistaken. You're going to need to do full ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 turns in there, okay? So you want to keep those current tenants in there as much as possible because the rougher the neighborhoods are, the worse stuff that happens when they're vacant, right? So, again, you're missing the rent, but you're also paying – renovation costs to upgrade the units to get new tenants and you're paying leasing fees to the property managers right but on top of that when these houses in these really rough neighborhoods with high crime go empty you got people coming in breaking in destroying the property sometimes they'll just squat and do drugs and 
you know, run whores out of there, steal copper out of the basement, all kinds of bad stuff, right? All kinds of just craziness, right? I mean, if you don't believe me, check out the Tenants from Hell show we have here, right? And those are situations from our properties. But guess what? Most of those that you see the bad stuff, they're from neighborhoods that are actually less risky than this one, right? So that's why I think if you're going to do this deal, you need to go on with a caveat M tour. I hope I said that right. Caveat M tour. You know, buyer beware, right? That's the that's the fancy, sophisticated way to say buyer beware. Okay, uh, you got to go with that mindset, right? Because it's a it's a very high risk neighborhood, super high risk. It's literally like probably one of the highest risk neighborhoods I would even consider working in as a property manager. Um, so I would say you got to pick it up for fifty. If you're paying over fifty, it's not worth the risk. If you pay fifty. You know, coin flip. Maybe it goes good for you. Maybe it goes bad for you. It's your call if you want to do the deal. But I don't see this neighborhood shifting uh, in either direction anytime in the near future, right? I don't see anything telling me this neighborhood's going to be on the upswing. And I also don't see anything telling me this neighborhood's going to get worse. So right now, it is what it is. It's fairly high risk. Probably a coin flip if it goes good for you. But that's the thing, right? It can go good for five years, go shitty for four years, go good for two, go shitty for three. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a long-term investment, right? You can't break an investment down like this based off of, like, one year of performance, right? Like, you could have like a great run and then it just goes to hell uh, or it can just be at hell for a while. And then you have a great run, right? That's the thing. It's an unpredictable investment. The higher the risk it is, the less predictable it is. And anybody telling you otherwise, telling you they can totally predict this stuff for you, they're either not well-versed in the game. They haven't done as much business as we have, over $200 million in sales, right? They don't know what they don't know or they're just fucking lying to you, right? This is the most open and honest uh, analysis of this rental property I could possibly get for you. And, you know, there's an unlimited amount of variables at all times. So some of the answers just have to be, well, I don't know. What do you want to do? And, and that's where I'm at with this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.